one in a hundred North Americans live in a van, almost a hundred percent more than just four years ago. Is this just some fancy trend for digital nomads? We have COVID to thank for the realization of this van life, or is there a secret dark side to the van life? Let's dive into it. 30 years ago, living in a van usually meant you were homeless or you were almost homeless. But today we have 1% of North Americans actually choosing to live on four wheels. And because I am no expert, we brought in the man, <laughs> the legend, <laughs> Graham Wardle, who does choose to live in a van. Graham. Hey. What's up, man? Hey, man. Good to be here. Thanks yeah, I'm here. in the top 1%. I live in a van. <laughs> You're in the top 1%. <laughs> Dude, first things first. Why? Why the van life? Uh, it's exciting. It's uh, You can be anywhere, anytime. You have all your stuff with you. So I'm parked here at your place, and I have all my stuff to where I want it. So I can go anywhere, anytime, and meet friends. It's <laughs> Last great. night... Like this house here has like tons of beds. It's set up for entertaining. And Graham's here and I'm like, all right, Graham, which bed do you want? Where do you want to be? And he just goes, yeah, I got my house here. So I'm going to go back to my own bed. And I was kind of thinking like, that's actually pretty cool. You have your comfortable bed. You have your pillow. There's like yeah. no achy bakey yeah. back in the morning. You're yeah. like at home. Exactly. You know, when you go into a hotel and you're like, oh, this bed's a little sinky or the sheets aren't right. It's all my own sheets. You got to worry about all like my potholes and, yeah. uh, and other things on the road. Yeah. So the question that we're going to answer today is, is van life really a choice? I mean, it seems like in your position is absolutely a choice. Uh, but I want to understand, is this like the only type of housing that will actually be affordable in the future? Or if yeah. it is, you know, truly a better way, like you feel more free, you're more nomadic, you have the ability to be more places certainly than I do. You can pick up and go anytime. So, and then we'll see where we go. Okay. Here's a realistic nighttime routine when I'm living in my van solo in the city. I like to get my least favorite task out of the way first, which is emptying my pee jug. Then I take my dog for his final outing of the night. Do you have, you, I mean. I have a pee jug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you like every day, you, like you have, to, I mean, you don't want your van. Uh, smelling, like... Yeah, no, I have a cap on it. So it's not like, you know, okay. it's just open <laughs> air pee jug. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You empty it out, get rid of it, clean it up. And where do you? Eh, by a tree or something. Oh yeah, yeah. just like, where, yeah. where, okay, yeah. I like to park at public beaches or parks or anywhere that I can just exist without being hassled. Mm -hmm. Is that something, do people like, like your- I've never had that. I've never parked at a place where someone's like knocking on your window or whatnot. But yeah, I've never had any trouble with people knocking on the windows, but I'm also arrive late, leave early. I'm gonna do a full hair washing shower. So I took my toilet out and then realized that I was parked on a slope. So I had to turn around so that the water will drain correctly. And after my shower, I got cozy in my PJs. <laughs> <laughs> Is this, you're like laughing as this, this Okay, this is why you don't shower in your van. <laughs> Get a, get a membership at a gym that's like a 24-7 gym. Yo. Go there, like a, like Anytime Fitness, you got private bathrooms. You just go in there, you shower, clean up, shave, you know. You, you do the whole thing. Towel service in there. Do you have a shower in? Yeah, but I don't use it because it's like, it's so tiny. Right. And like you get problems like this, you got to, you know, go bring your water around and like, then you got to empty and you got to drain yeah. it. <laughs> Just get a gym membership. It's the best. The van's always looking like an absolute disaster by the end of the day, so I always have to take some time to tidy up before I can truly relax. Then I sit down for dinner, usually scroll on my phone or watch a show, and once it's late enough, I start getting ready to go to my sleeping spot. Before I leave the beach, I make my bed, put all my window covers on, brush my teeth, and basically do anything that I need to do before going to sleep. Then I drive around looking for the perfect spot where I won't be bothered or be a bother. Some nights that's easier than others, and on the hard nights, I often ask myself, what am I doing with my life? But once I get to that spot and put all my window covers on it's like i'm transported to my safe and cozy place this is kind of like what you were saying about exactly you're always in your home but you can be transported yeah to and when you put all your window coverings on you almost forget where you are i guess you would have to have like you're not just letting the sun pile no. in, in the morning no yeah so you put all your coverings on then you're like i'm in my home even though i'm not in the same place yeah, all the, the time same location actually he still makes her van look more aesthetic and neat than my own room i actually have a theory about this because it's a tight space like it looks messy faster yep but you also clean it in very fast three minutes. uh yeah you have to be very careful about what you buy and i've been living this way without living in a van for a long time because i've traveled so much okay so i always have to move my stuff and through right. all that moving i'm like man this is a lot of work i don't want all this stuff <laughs> So I started living this lifestyle years before I started living in a van. And then now it's just like, yeah, I can't buy this because it's not portable enough. It doesn't go in the van. So then it's like creative, like how can I make the most use of what I have already or upgrade uh, what I have to have more functionality. But yeah, it keeps you in that minimalistic mindset yeah. and then appreciating what you have. So it's just like clean and neat and then not a headache when you have to move. I have a little air purifier. I'm like, this is the biggest I can have because any bigger, where am I going to put it? What else we got here? Why is her bed more cozy than my whole house? Yeah, I mean, it does look like... <laughs> she's she's a woman. Pillows there. She's yeah, a woman. She's, very, she's done a great job <laughs> beautifying the space here. The hard part is finding a place to sleep every night. No one explains... Okay, so 
How do you choose where your van is going to go? If you if you can't afford a campsite, that's tough. Right. Um, Before, so you would go to a campsite. Like, most of the time, I'm at campsites, so you can hook okay. up and plug oh, in a power. Oh, plug and stuff. in your yeah. thing. You get water. Yeah, and yeah. Whatever. And there's okay, showers yeah. and stuff there too. Um, but yeah, so you can go to parks. Um, there's a great app called RV Parky, and it shows you all the campgrounds, all the fees, WalMarts, any place that you can park. Wow. And it's kind of like the Google Maps for RV life, okay. and it shows you all the places around where you can stay, how much it costs. You can call the places. You can upload photos. So you can leave reviews. Money per night, just to park. I guess like at, at a, a campground. Camp for sure. There are like some campgrounds Walmart's, that are. Uh, no, Walmart's are free. They're free. My trick is like again, arrive late. Right. Uh, if you have only a short van, you can just park on the street and then pack up, sleep, wake up, leave. Like and uh, nobody cares in the neighborhood you're meeting. Like, yeah, just, yeah, just like just a residential, drive residential neighborhood. neighborhood. Yeah. Right. If you don't have the money to do it, then it kind of gives you this really unsettled feeling because you're like, like the money. Like what is it? For? Campgrounds can be like you know twelve bucks a night, or they can be two hundred bucks. Like you can get oh, really wow. nice. <laughs> Real, well, it's waterfront. Always, I'm talking like waterfront, oh, like sort of like ocean, super like, nice, okay, okay, you know. Sure. This is how much money I spend in a week living in a van. My car insurance payments are $108 a month, making it $27 a week. This week I spent $70 on gas, but it is dependent on how much I'm traveling. Because I'm Canadian and I'm traveling in the States, I need travel health insurance, which is $120 a month, making it $30 a week. My USA phone plan is $70 a month, making it $17.50 a week. I'm still paying for my Canadian phone plan while in the States. It's $80 a month, making it $20 a week. Miscellaneous items such as alcohol, eating out, entrance fees to park, total to $54. Groceries this week only cost me $50, and I will say that I am never going out to eat. I'm always cooking for myself at home. This week's total comes to $268.50, bringing my average month cost just shy of $1,100. That's actually... Wow. So, and, but she also, like, I... As someone who has a home, I also have car insurance and, and you know gas payments and stuff yeah. like this. So this is quite is this is this realistic like for you? You know, uh, to be honest, I, I'm blessed that I don't really pay attention right. to, to, <laughs> to to too much of the numbers. I'm not number crunching to yeah. survive. I'm doing this more as of a choice because I want the freedom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that seems plausible and, and realistic. Um, but this that's, is like, she's this obviously is all living like this is yeah. groceries and yeah, she's obviously bit. budgeting very yeah. tight. You yeah. know, what would you say is the biggest surprise like when you first you know you conceptualize this you get the van you're living in your van you get rid of your house <laughs> and all your things go into the van and then this cost pops up and you're like oh i didn't expect that i think it's more of like the inconvenience of certain things going wrong like the furnace breaks and you're like ah now i have to like uh go get the repairs done at a rv park thing or do it myself <laughs> or my whole house, house has got exactly what am i gonna do what am i gonna do where am i gonna and like, then also i'm giving my house to somebody else are they like opening cabinets and looking at my clothes or taking oh, stuff or touching stuff or stealing thing. stuff some pictures or yeah or Bitcoin so you, private keys in your van and <laughs> exactly right so it's like okay so how do i safeguard this stuff or where do i put it right so mm. i'm lucky enough that i i've i've had friends and people around that i can say oh, okay i'm gonna put some stuff in this garage or in this place you know person's okay. house or whatever so that's been the sort of way to sort of jump around that but you just kind of have to think ahead of like yeah if my car has, my van has a problem, I'm going to take it to the shop. What, am I going to live in my van in the shop? Yeah. No, you know, like, for like no. a week, like yeah. it is. One other thing too that I feel like is kind of interesting talking about the cost is, is crazy is less or more than my parents' first house. When yeah. I, like my parents' first house, they bought for a hundred K and this, you know, like I'm not sure, like this van is super nice. I'm sure it was like more than a hundred K to 150. buy yeah. 150 grand. Yeah. So you know, you think about last generation buying their house for 100K, this generation buying their like mobile house for, 100K. for 150, yeah. like, you know, inflation, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's like about the same cost yeah. there. How do you think, where does this go as far as affordability for like, you know, let's blow this out into oblivion. Like, do we see, you know, today it's one in a hundred Americans. Do we see eventually one yes. in 20 Americans yes. living in a van? Yeah, because of the, the, we've talked about this, the fiat. Right. So it's because of the fiat standard or the fiat world that this is going to continue. So I, I can just see it that way. Like people will be like, I can't afford to live in an apartment. In a, in a house. In an apartment. I, or a house, let right. alone a house. These like yeah. condensed cities, especially. It's not going to work. There's like, you know, rest stops on the side of the highway. Okay. They become like camping grounds. Wow. So people will just park their RVs there. Like on the side of the highway. Side of the highway, they live there. Dump their pee buckets off the cliff. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. So, so far, these people that we've seen, they've been single. They haven't really had, like you said, the family style. We, it's been... Single individuals that are able to keep a neat and tidy place, go wherever they want to go and work and live. But what does it look like for a family? So the reason we finally decided to make the jump and make this dream a reality is because the pandemic has forced us to really reevaluate our lives. I'm Cody Williams. I'm from Toronto, Ontario, and this is my van. 
Like, this is what I picture <laughs> sleeping in a van. Like, you've got an empty van and a mattress Natural. on the floor. <laughs> when you first walk in the door, you'll see we built this partition here. And this just allows us access into the cab. I've put in about just over $4,000 in materials at this point. I've been really lucky to source some bigger items such as the batteries and the fridge secondhand from Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace and that sort of thing. People are becoming more aware of it. Yeah. And it's becoming more popular. I have an L-shaped counter here. The thing I like the most about this is that everybody's van is customized to what they want it to be. It's a little bit more ghetto than like what you or like some of the other vans that we have. Do you think is this like which which one is more sustainable? Because the ghetto side obviously has less conveniences. You're already mm. limiting your convenience so much. When you're living in a van, are you able to like just your convenience meter is just like down, 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 down. So you're willing to, you know, overcome some of the inconveniences. There's things that you're going to be like, we don't have the budget for this. Or we don't have the space for this. So like, what is this really about? And like, that's what I say to people when they're thinking about this is say, go rent a van, mm. a camper van, if and you can afford it. And, and just, yeah, try weaken it. See what you like, see what you don't like. Because okay. everyone's a little different. My cabinets, when they open up, or the, the, the little cabinets, yeah. the, the doors are right at my eye level. So if I'm not looking and I'm moving around and I <laughs> whack. So yeah, yeah. sacrifices, yeah. Uh, trade-offs, and then just thinking about what you really need and want. Mm. Do you want to make your bed every night or do you want it to be pre-made? Right. Do you want a toilet? Okay, composting toilet or plumbing? Wow. Where are you going to put your water? You know, like all these little things. Like, it's a lot, but then um, it all comes down, what's the what's the experience you want to have in your in your van or whatever? Right. This is amazing. I love the lifestyle of being wow. free and just being any go anywhere. I love the house, build a house one day, but like the van life, it's the minimalism and the simplicity and the getting back to like living. Right. And you're like, my house, I want to get outside. Like I don't want right. to stay inside all the time. Maintain a big house. And yeah. A yeah. yeah. I've done that. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Here we've got, okay, you sure have a strange way of saying that most young people can't afford to buy an actual home in the, any big city in Canada. So they're resorting to living in their vehicles and presenting it as being an awesome adventure not nearly homeless. You know, I think there's a definite sort of like stigma about being in a van. Mm. It's like, yeah, there is. You know, it's like you look down on people like that. Right. And, and it's like, I don't know, uh, maybe some people have to live in a van and that's their, where they're at in life. But it's like, there's like sort of this idea that if you have a house, you're somewhere more prestigious and you're, you know, property owner and things. It's like, there's so much more to life than owning stuff. Oh, uh, dude. And I mean, especially like, I think that the biggest trick that society has fallen into and continues to glamorize is home ownership as yeah. if like owning a home will be the end all be all of your financial and then you'll be happy and yeah forever yeah. and you know really like in in miami there's a two percent property tax which means every 50 years you have paid the house's value in taxes. property tax i see they're making promotional trailers for you will own nothing <laughs> the wef <laughs> you'll yeah. own nothing and be happy eat your crickets you totally <laughs> right and i think i think to some degree there is that sort of like element of of people trying to cope with this sort of new world that we live in or the the changing sort of affordability of housing and i don't think it's something that like i said earlier i don't think people would want to stay in a van right. and i don't think we should glamorize like hey you can have a whole family in a van no yeah. <laughs> you need a place for your kids to run around <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think there is a real problem and we need to affix that so that people can own homes when they want to. Right. You know? So with that, I want to ask you, the audience, would you ever consider joining Graham here, <laughs> Van Life, meeting him on the side of the road? You guys can like share your best spots to uh, empty your piss buckets and, uh, <laughs> and and share challenges of meat going bad and, and having to feed other things. Is Van Life out of the question? Are you going to continue, you know, uh, sacrificing other quality of lives, other, other, uh, other means to live in uh, maybe an apartment or a, a traditional house. Anyways, let me know in the comments. And also, if you liked this video, remember to like, subscribe. Yeah, with that, live in a van, live in a house. The, remember, the number one thing we can do is future-proof yourself and stay sovereign.